So the first thing that strikes me straight away, particularly from the angle I'm at, is the use of lightweight material. So from the inside, I can see all of this beautiful carbon fiber on the inside of that clamshell bonnet. Um, that definitely starts the theme of DBS over DB11. This car overall is 74 kilograms lighter than a DB11, despite having the V12 engine. And of course, for half a century, DBS has only ever meant one thing, um, the ultimate Aston Martin production car. Absolutely. And talking of ultimates, this is the most powerful um, series production engine that we've, we've ever put in an Aston Martin. So it puts out 715 brake horsepower, um, which is staggering. And it, it is an Aston engine through and through. So um, it is closely related to the last series of V12 engines. But of course, in this instance, it's turbocharged. And I, I always think headline power probably does very little to um, illustrate what the car is really capable of. Yeah, I agree. The big thing with this car is torque, and it puts out 900 newton meters of torque, which in itself is an incredible figure, but the most amazing thing for me is it's available between 1800 RPM and 5000 RPM. It's just staggering. I mean, you, you know, you Most could, of the rev range. Yeah, it, yeah, you could just pull down houses with, with, with that sort of torque. Um, and in terms of raw acceleration figures, so it does naught to 60 in 3.6 seconds, that's really quick. But for me, the fact that it does naught to 100 miles an hour in 6.4 seconds is just out of this world, isn't it? It, it, it is an incredible feat. I'm not sure I could run up the stairs in 6.4 seconds. <laughs> and I think how that, that kind of translates on the road is, yes, this car, it, it's probably a theme that runs for every Aston. It's got this breadth of ability. So it doesn't have to be an uncontrollable monster. It is immensely controllable, but what all this torque does for you is you don't have to um, rev the engine really hard to make incredible progress. It can be that sort of effortless wafty GT Tourer, or you can firm it all up and it can be a really edgy, colossally quick sports car. And of course, characterized as being a brute in a suit and it lives up to that, um, lives up to that, um, that character. Awesome. Agreed. So continuing the weight saving theme, we've got a carbon fiber prop shaft that feeds to the rear wheels, full eight speed ZF auto box, which is just lovely. It's super fast shifting and smooth, isn't it, in terms of daily use? It is, and a single piece drive um, you know, drivetrain as well. Yeah, it's all about making sure that as much of that, that power and torque gets to the, the rear wheels and is fed through a limited, mechanical limited slip diff. While still being lightweight. Absolutely, yeah. Um, should be pointed out as well, physically this car is a little shorter than DB11 too. So lighter, shorter, more power. What's not to like? Quite, yeah. So one of the important things about um, DBS on the basis Aston Martin have put so much effort into making it go really quickly is that it's got a, uh, a set of stoppers that kind of befit the performance. Well, I look, when I look at them, I mean, first of all, you can see your reflection in them. They are <laughs> ginormous. Uh, and, I, and I guess it, it needs that to stop the car because it has so much power? Yeah, exactly right. I mean, they, they are the biggest ceramic brakes fitted to a car in its class. So you're absolutely right. They're, they're, they're massive, Paul. They're 410 millimeter six pot calipers. Um, and they have all sorts of benefits. So not only are they enormously powerful, but being carbon ceramic, there are lots of benefits to, um, to, to, to the package overall. One being lightweight, so they save 23 kilograms from unsprung weight, where it really matters in terms of um, car's behavior, that it's ride and, uh, and handling. Yeah, uh, and again, you mentioned lightweight. This seems to be an inherent theme right throughout this car. Um, so not just awesome power um, delivery from the engine, but um, huge weight savings right across the whole car. Definitely so. I, I think um, another really pleasing but small detail to having ceramic brakes day to day for me. So they resist fade, that's brilliant, particularly with repeated high, high, um, high speed stops. But they also don't create so much brake dust, so your wheels stay cleaner for longer. And, with Aston Martins being so aesthetically beautiful, it's just something that's quite pleasing. Your car stays looking cleaner for longer. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think that's right. And um, so about 
carbon ceramic breaks. And a common question that I'm asked is that do they need to be at um, high operating temperature to work effectively, or could they be used uh, on, on kind of everyday uh, driving, which is, uh, again, what this car is capable of? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. Actually, when the technology was first introduced to road cars, it was okay, but it, it, it still meant that they didn't perform quite as well until they got significant heat into them. Yeah. Actually, the modern setups are just incredible. So, yeah, I mean, these are fiercely powerful from the moment you, you, you put your foot on the brake from a cold start. And, yeah, um, yeah you, you, you definitely get that. And I've, I've actually had the benefit of using these brakes on a max speed runway um, run. So I did the full 200 miles an hour. You get all the great jobs. Yeah, exactly. Somebody's got to. <laughs> and at 200 miles an hour, again, you touch the brakes and particularly um, in Sport Plus mode, what it does is it, it makes the brake more responsive with a shorter travel. So um, it just, the moment you touch them, you've got confidence and you can feel what the brake's gonna do. Yeah, yeah absolutely incredible.